headquarters of my flying circus for today we set forth to conquer the air today the air tomorrow the moon we will design a superb aeroplane our scientists back in Germany have been working very hard and we will take off and with our fuckers we shall scourge the allies from the skies and it'll be Alice Uber for Weihnachten. He likes. So, get your engines ready. Make sure your synchronization gear is in place. And let's do it for the Kaiser! Today's game is Richthofen, a two player game of 1916 aerial combat from Micro Wars on the Commodore 64 by Humphrey Wallin. One, ally, one German and one Allied aircraft take each other on in the skies over northern France. The main attraction of the game is that both players must first design their planes before they can fly against each other. Once you have a viable design, you can then test it against the opposition and try to shoot the enemy down. The game itself was designed to be an entertaining demonstration of the problems of early 20th century aircraft production as each side tried to produce more and more fighting uh, machines. The calculations are based on a German manual of aircraft performance dated 1921, which Mr. Wallin discovered one day in his local library. So the first thing you have to choose is how many wings you have. 1916 saw the Fokker Scourge with the monoplanes, but they were very new and they hadn't quite worked out all the problems of uh, structural strength. You could have a biplane or you could have a triplane. Triplanes need a bigger engine because the airframe is heavier, but they can be very maneuverable in flight. Biplanes with two wings are the best compromise. The Red Baron was famous for his Fokker uh, triplane, although most of his kills were, weren't done in a triplane, but in fact in a monoplane. So here I'm choosing a biplane. I now have to choose the weight and strength of the airframe, choosing 300, so it's slightly stronger than normal. I then have to choose the airframe design emphasis on speed, which is, I'll show you seven, engine power, and then the size of the gun, and then how much ammunition to carry. Ammunition has weight. So this plane has a ceiling of 7,380, maximum speed of five, minimum of two. I'm firing ammunition type eight, which is quite heavy. The gun is quite stable. The bigger the gun, the better. Range of four, but my plane is quite fragile. And it's called the Swimming Crow. The more emphasis on speed you have, the faster your plane is, but you're going to lose maneuverability. And also you're going to lose lift. So the Allies associated again a triplane, going very similar. A small emphasis on speed this time, and a smaller gun, and with less ammunition. So here I've got a higher maximum speed, a higher ceiling, I'm very maneuverable. The Better maneuver the better, higher maneuver the better. If you're not maneuverable enough, the planes can have problems flying. And this plane is even more fragile, 60 points, and has a, a shorter gun range. This is a soaring crow. There are various names you can choose, which is based on the maneuverability and the minimum speed. taking off. On the left you have the Allies, 
on the right, you have the Germans, because the Allies could be French, could be British, could even be um, the Canadian and Australians have included, could even be Americans fighting, flying for the uh, La Escadrille Lafayette. So here on the left, the Allies are taking off. Their speed is increasing. They are the top row. And they're moving along the runway. Nice speed of four. And they're not taken off yet. And they've now taken off. Height of 500. Speed of two. Excellent. Their minimum speed is two. At the top of the Allied runway, the number two appears, which reminds you of your minimum flying speed. If you go below that, you'll rapidly lose height. So now flying along at 500 feet, speed of three, heading towards the Germans. The Germans are now moving along. I'm firing my gun. The Germans are now flying along their runway, a speed of four. Oh, will they be able to take off before um, they run out of runway? No, the Allies have in fact crashed. I believe we stalled, and you stalled very, very quickly. But you can always get your aircraft back and give it another go. So it gave me a little reasonable design of aircraft, but I crashed. So, so the Soaring Crow will fly again. So remember, the Germans are on the right, the Allies are on the left. Confusingly, the keyboard co controls are reversed. So the Germans are on the left of the keyboard, and the Allies are on the right. I do not know why this is. So now the Allies have taken off just above the ground, 250 feet, and have now turned to their port, and are advancing towards the uh, front line. And here come the Germans, ready to intercept. Slowly taxiing along the runway. Got to get his speed up and take off. And all is deadly silent. I was reading a book called Flying for France. They said basically you didn't hear the, the um, anti-aircraft that's going to be going off. Because you'd already gone past it but the sound happened. You just saw the sound. So the Allies have now turned to port again. We're both flying in the same direction. The Germans are now off the ground. We're both flying quite low. Here we go. Germans are on the right, the reverse uh, graphic image. And they've now turned to their port, flying towards each other. Similar height. In order to hit the enemy, you have to be flying directly towards them. And your height has to be within 250 feet. So if you're much higher than them or much lower, they can't hit you. And vice versa. They're both going very slowly. Here we are, turning around. Trying to get into, into shooting position. So the Allies are zooming up towards the Germans. Oh, that was a nice, nice shooting effect. And the Allies are now shooting. No sound for the Allies, curiously, but what's sound for the Germans? Whether that's based on the calibre, I don't quite know. The Allies are now turning away. Oh, and the Germans have fired back. And here we have a, a sequence of commands. Those are the commands you've entered in. The get string command on the Commodore 64 is a bit flaky. So now let's try again a different design. This is the Singing Eagle this time. We're going to try some basic aeronautics. So the Allies are on the left. They have a Singing Eagle. Currently at a height of 8,000 feet. And they're going to increase their height to see what we get. Anti-aircraft is here. We could fire quite high quite early on. Up to 13,000 feet in some of the sectors of the front. So certainly increasing our height. Every time you increase your height, your speed reduces. If your speed reduces too much, you will stall. And if you stall, your plane graphic is replaced with the at symbol. The screen is wrapped around in both directions. So you can, if you fly off the left, you appear on the right and vice versa. Like a very small world. If you run out of ammunition, you can restore it to full. If you return to your hangar, which is you have to be at ground level on the runway with a speed of zero. Then your ammunition is topped up and you can then turn around and take off again. So here my height is not 99,000 feet, but in fact 9,900. I've reached um, 10,000 feet, which is above my ceiling, and it's now dropped me down to 9,900. But the formatting isn't quite right. I've now stalled very quickly and crashed, possibly too quickly. So now I'm going to try for a nice clean landing. I'm now shooting along the runway. I'm heading north, height of 750 feet. I fire off my cannon a couple of times just to show you what happens when we uh, hit the hangar and restore. I'm now going to head north off the top of the map. If either plane is at 750 feet, you get this nasty flickering effect 
where the top of the screen just constantly gets replaced, and I don't know why that is. It doesn't seem to make a great deal of sense why it has to be 750 feet, but there you are. So now my speed is nice and fast. If you reduce your height, you would increase your speed. Because you're diving, there you are. I've dived to 500 feet. Speed is now up to four. If you go above your maximum speed, you will take damage. And you can indeed crash. This plane is very fragile. My height is now zero, but it says 50. I'm going much too fast. I'm trying to slow down. And I've run off the end of the runway. And you see here, me desperately pressing B to slow down. So I'll try this again. Increase my speed. This plane is incredibly fragile. A, if a, a pigeon hit it, you would uh, crash. Go okay, nice and fast. Up we go. So all you have to do is take off, turn around and land again, hopefully without dying. So when we go to the, to the right, fire my gun off. So everything, all the uh, parts of your plane have impact on each other. The bigger the gun, the more you can fire, but you're also heavier. The more ammunition you carry, the more you can fire, obviously, but of course that has weight. Even having a big engine is a problem, because if your engine's too big, you can basically rip your plane apart. It's like having a Rolls Royce jet engine in a very small Cessna. You'll rip, rip the airplane apart. So, we're now heading north towards our hangar. Height of 1,000 feet. It's going nice and slow. So let's dive. We're increasing our speed. Down to 500 feet. We're slowing down. Textbook here. Down to 250 feet. Down to zero. But it's printing it wrong. Let's try and, try and slow down. Four, three, two, one. Zero, uh, and I now appear to be accelerating backwards without actually moving, which um, isn't quite right. That doesn't seem to be entirely appropriate. So let's now try and move back forward to a positive speed. Here we are. We're now doing minus seven, minus six. Again, the formatting is now broken. We just want to move forward ever so slightly into the hangar and then stop. Speed is, the, oh no, going a bit too fast now. Slow down, slow down. We're going too fast. We've got to make the morning last. And I've run off the runway, and again I've crashed. Four German victories. He's one off being an ace. So this is version 2 of the game. Not much has changed so far, but I put in some error checking in the aircraft design. Aircraft design is a key part of the game and it's rather well implemented, except they didn't put any error checking in. So basic design, monoplane, biplane, triplane, 1, 2 or 3. There's no checking that you entered 1, 2 or 3 or that you just press enter at all. So I put in basic checking for that. Same with the airframe. I went to here 400 to 250 is average. Should be from up to 100. You could just put enter in and then get all kinds of strange problems. So you're trying to design an airplane and all the factors interfere with each other in interesting ways. So this plane has got a... It's pretty fast. It's, it's a little bit heavy on the manoeuvring. So manoeuvrability, the higher the worse. So some of my commands won't work. Press any key to continue. And press any key generally here does mean any key. But when you get to the you've done it wrong, you idiot, try again, it is not press any key, it is just wait. However, the Commodore 64 in this implementation stores your key presses. So if you're pressing enter, 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 because you want to get on with the design of the plane, you will then go back to into the whole loop of, oh, you press enter already, and it gets annoying. That's why I fix those. So here we've gone for a try play. Now, triplanes are slower, but more manoeuvrable. The strength of the airframe when it's your resistance, if it's too low. So here I've put in my strength of the airframe is 10. That's ridiculously low. So no, the minimum is 100. It says so on the screen. So what about 1,000? Let's go for some armoured airframes. There were some armoured planes in World War I. Um, often they armoured the front if they were meant for a grand attack. So it's gone for a design on lift rather than speed. 
but a very powerful engine. And let's go for a massive gun. No, you can't put a railway gun on a plane, James. Try again. But they did have some planes with 20mm cannons on them. And how much ammunition do you want? Well, you can't have no ammunition because that's just stupid. So let's have five bursts. So this plane has a ceiling of 6,000, but its maximum speed is minus 14. It's far too slow to fly. You cannot have a flying fortress in World War I. So here, though, you have to wait until the game lets you go forward. You can't just press enter to continue. So you go around the loop again. Extra error checking went into the names you get. He mentions the best plane you can get is the unbeatable angel, except those words do not exist in the game. It's also possible to have a game where the name breaks the game or is just blank. So I've had the, the blank, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So fix some of those. Also, it's possible to have a plane with a resistance of zero, which is basically falling apart on the runway, but not actually falling apart. So here, the plane has a maneuverability factor of zero, which is excellent. Maximum speed of nine, minimum of two, which is you know, lots of variety. You want a bit of choice in your speed. Unfortunately, this plane is basically made out of wet paper and will just fall apart on the ground. Lots of things affect resistance. The bigger the engine, the lower resistance, but it can increase the weight of your airframe, but then that takes away from your, takes away from your speed and your ceiling. I've also changed Allied to Entente. Um, the Entente uh, was the relationship between uh, Britain and France, which seems a bit more World War I than the Allies. World War I was more complicated. Of course, you had Entente, you had Allies, you had Associated Powers. But when America joined the war, they were an Associated Power. Belgium were not part of the Entente, but they were fighting on our side because the war was in Belgium. Belgium were very insistent on their neutrality. Here's our plane. We've got a better plane now. Highly manoeuvrable, ceiling of 12,750. Well done, us. My effective gun rate is 5, and the, this plane is the Soaring Wasp, which is a much nicer than the poking about crow we had before. So here we start the game. I decided that looking down on the ground, the ground in France is not blue. I've gone for brown, because it's considered the mud of the Western Front. In the middle, we have the trenches. On the left, as before, we have the Allies, who, who are now blue, who are blue. On the right, we have the Germans, who are now red. Only the Red Baron is red. Once you start off, you get an engine sound. The engine sound. Thought, you know, it gives it. I stole that from Dogfight, which is by um, also by Humphrey Wallen and another chap. In the 60 uh, games of the Commodore 64, you've, I've covered that before. I thought, nicked the basic sound, I then changed it based on the speed. And unfortunately, the German aircraft has crashed off the end. We have total on top victories of one. Do you want an old aircraft back? Yes, we can. That means we get another go. Or if you if you say no, you go back to the drawing board and the loser gets to design a brand new plane. So the trenches in the middle are sprites, background sprites. The clouds, which either go up or down depending on the wind, are foreground sprites, so the planes will go behind the clouds and can therefore hide in them. The planes themselves are not sprites, they are just characters just displayed on the screen by poking. Poking a character on the screen on the Commodore 64 is actually quite simple. And there's the firing. I fixed a minor irritation, I swapped over the position on the keyboard of the German and the Entente controls, so the Germans are now on the right and the Entente are on the left. So now flying over the over the trenches as our speed increases, if you push your speed above your maximum, you will take damage and drop back down. So the Germans there zooming along at high speed, just turning there with the clouds. You can see them just about behind the clouds, going up, turning to port, doing the sneak attack on the Allied on the Entente airfield, which is going a little bit fast to try and capture it. So around to the right, then to the left. Hopefully, I can get him in time. I have overshot. One thing the designers note, and my reading on Wikipedia confirm, is that because planes at the time used rotary engines, there was always a bit of a pull to the right. So going to the left was considerably, considerably more difficult than going to the right. And the Sopwith Camel, in particular, was deadly because a turn to the right would always or often lead to a drop in the nose as well. So generally, they recommended don't do that. So I've now shot the 
allies on the ground, the Entente on the ground, I should say, not the allies. So the sound works for both both players. And it's reasonably attractive, I think. It's good progress. Also fix some bugs where the sound could be negative. So here the allies have now taken off. In order to take off, you must be above your minimum speed. The Germans have a higher minimum speed, their minimum speed is 3. A safe takeoff can be attempted once you get to 4, because lifting off immediately drops your speed by 1. So if you're at minimum speed and you take off, you'll just crash. Which is a bit of a problem. I was unable to fix the number forwarding issues in version 2. Nor in version 3 for that matter. But one step at a time, as we say. The screen is wrapped around in both directions. So there's the Allies zooming out. Oh, I'm best trying to sneak up on the Germans. The Entente, I should say. There were Allies, but I like to say the Entente. This is feel more World War One as opposed to World War Two. The Allies are now, the Entente are now behind the Germans and they've shot him down. And again, you go back to you have you know you get victories. Whenever you crash, your victories are reset, and the loser gets to go back to the drawing board, which is historically accurate, I suppose. version 3. I wanted to add a little bit more and on reading Flying for France he described how lovely France looked from the air, how lovely and green all the nice fields and forests. Then you got to the front and you got this rather nasty sort of brown area where everything was dead. So the middle bit is now a multi-coloured sprite which you can do in Commodore 64. You lose some of the horizontal resolution, the sprites are doubled, but you, get, you can have, now have four colours in a sprite. So you've got brown in the middle and in the black trenches. We have the two sounds as before. I also changed the sound of the guns to differentiate between different calibers of gun. The bigger calibers of gun do more damage and have a, a lower sound. It's a deep sound there from the German gun. And the, uh, the Entente gun, which I shall fire in a moment, should have a higher sound. It's very small. You can also see the planes, and now it looks like they're facing the other way. So that, see, that was the Allied sound, that was higher. German sound lower. Not vastly different, but enough to bit of variety. So now the German pilot has crashed. The German pilot killed in crash, it says, because he died over on my side. And this is a victory for the Rocket Swallow, it mentions the name. We have a little French flag. And we've run out of memory. This is a problem. So to start off with, this is how you found out how much free memory you have. 38.909 bytes. And this is how you create custom characters using machine using basic code to copy the ROM. After doing that, I realized I didn't have enough memory, so I changed it. And now I do this bit of poking, bit of clearing, and I have 679 bytes free. Not enough. So I move the font. And I have 2754, which should be better. So we're off again. We have a sort of career mode, which is what we like. The idea is you've got to get to five victories, but that's going to be five in a row in the, in the original and version two, because if you get shot down in between, it resets. Here, depending on where you crash or a shot down, you crash on your side of the middle of the screen. Um, you live to live to fly again. If you crash in the middle, you die. If you crash on the wrong side, you're taken away to prison for war camp. And again, when you win, you get a little national flag, which is rather jolly. You can see here the German plane is a lot sturdier than the Entente plane with uh, 200 points of resistance. And this actually does matter because the the bigger guns do more damage, so it's not just one shot to kill. So it's a bit more tactical, and you can indeed run out of ammunition. 
but the German player only has three bursts. Pretty good player's got, got a heavier gun. So we have two different sounds for the plane, different sounds for the gun based on calibre. We've got different characters, different colours. The planes are different colours now. We've, got, we've moved off the reverse nonsense. So red is obviously not entirely historically accurate because only the Red Baron was red. He was special. But the German pilots did like to have much more multicoloured planes than the, the Entente, who were basically went more for camouflage. So we're all flying around trying to shoot each other. Up we go. So the Allies, the Entente, trying try to dodge behind a cloud. You can turn quite nicely. If you go faster than your maximum speed, you take damage. There are many things I wanted to put in. I'll discuss these um, later. Since you were flying about, we're both trying to stay on each side of the lines. Uh oh, here come the Germans. Flying towards the front and increasing their speed. When I was playtesting this, I could get to know what the planes were doing while the sand. Germans are now flying at very high speed. Of course, the cloud is now over, um, overshadowing the uh, control panel. But that's what you guess what you get. The Germans are now over on the Entente side of the front. The Allies slowly pushing about. The Germans are now coming in for the kill. The Germans are higher up. If you're within 250 feet, though, you can still shoot each other. Oh, Germans! To, you're going to get behind, though. You get safety. So we have four. Um, characters. We only, we only have four characters for the up, down, left, right planes. I've not done anything for the runways. The left of the runways, as they are the, pet, the normal pet ski characters. I wasn't a big fan of the pet ski characters to start with, but they did the, they did, a, did the job. What I find interesting with the Commodore 64 is that sprites are relatively simple to do, but if you want to have a single user defined graphic, you have to redefine the entire character set, or at least copy it and then find space for it. And you're very limited where you can put it. There are only, I think, eight locations, and you can't use half of them. And the one I found is, if you're not very careful, you will have your basic code overwriting your font. Ooh, that's a big boo. That's a big gun. So, on top, air crashes. A victory for the singing pelican. And again here. As you, the Germans get more and more victories, their flags get bigger and bigger. And here now, the Allies are, are shooting the Germans on the ground. And it's taking multiple hit shots to shoot him because he's a big, powerful aircraft. But he's shot down with a little, little tiny French flag and a victory for the Celestial Eagle. Now we're fly flying against each other. Again, we're showing the difference between the quite weedy um, Entente gun and the bigger German gun, which is the German chose a bigger caliber. Again, because the German crashed on his side of the lines, he did this to fly again, and you see here the number of counts don't reset. But here, the Entente captain's been shot down on the wrong side of the line and is off to the prison of war camp. The German flag gets bigger, and here, if the French get five victories, it is a victory, improving yourself an ace pilot, huge French flag, and Marshal Joffre pins the medal on you, which is nice. Marshal Joffre being the commander in chief of French forces until the end of 1916. This game is set in 1916, not any later. Now the Allies are flying at 2,000 feet, and what they're going to do is show you its stalling. So two and a half thousand feet, we'll keep increasing, and now we're alternating between the plane and the at symbol, and each turn our height is dropping by 500 feet, I'm about to crash into no man's land, and have died. This results in five victories for the Germans, and the Kaiser himself gives you the Blue Max, the Paula Mimit medal of the Prussians. And at the end, we have 29 bites free. Oh, hello. Sorry about that. That was Richthofen by Humphrey Warden, versions 1, 2 and 3.
I took notes, copious notes of things I wanted to do. And unfortunately, I didn't have enough memory to get to version 4, and not enough memory, not enough skill to make it better. So one of the things I wanted to do with version 4 was have your chance of survival on your side or, or on the no man's side affected by height, and maybe the, you know your damage should be taken. I wanted a warning sound when you were stalling, some sort of beeeeee sound, uh, like we have with a crash, but better and longer, because the crash sound's really short. Maybe the crash sound could depend on height. When you're taking damage by going too fast, a little warning for that, because I didn't realize it was happening half of the time. When you won, I wanted it to play either the Master Lays or the Deutschland lead, but the length of the tune, again, relates to the size of the flag, the more victories you have, the longer the tune. There were numeric formatting errors. If you increased your speed to, say, 10 and then reduced it, or your height to 1,000 and then reduced it, you were left with trading zeros, which things could get a little bit confusing. The other issue I had was get string. You, you press a key, and then when the commoner goes, has a key been pressed, it's activated. This is different to the spectrum in keys, which is, is someone pressing a key right this very second now? So what can happen is you press your key, and when the Commodore looks, you press it three times, which is good in a way you can press the key three times and you accelerate three times, but also then if you're firing at your opponent, you'll be hammering the key, and they don't get, they don't get a look in, which isn't very fair. There's a way around that by using peak to see what, what key's been pressed at that very moment, just like in keys on the specy. While you died, you know, did you crash, were you destroyed in the air? I want a little Sid chip tune playing while you're um, flying about. Unfortunately, you've only got three voices, and I've got one voice for the engine, second voice for the second engine, and third voice for the gun. And you're out of luck, mate. I wanted to have fuel. Because you could loiter on your side because it's safer, well, what, how to stop you doing that? Well, you could run out of fuel. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is having ground targets. So if you're just faffing about, not wanting to engage, maybe the enemy comes over and starts shooting at your artillery or some such sort of thing. I mentioned the Red Baron got his name because he had a red plane. Because he, he got a red plane because he was good. How about after you get two victories, you get a choice. So you start off with a standard colour plane. After two victories, you get a choice of colour. You know, sort of, as a sort of bonus for being a good pilot. But anyway, that was Rick Toffin on the Commodore 64, also known as Airwall by Humphrey Wallen. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll leave you with the grand finale. Schwarzbrand ist die Hasselnuss, Schwarzbrand bin auch ich ja Berlin. Schwarzbrand muss mein Mädel sein, war das so wie ich. Hold me, you be, you be die, ha ha ha. Hold me, you be, you be, you be die, ha 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 ha. Hold me, you be, you be, you be die, ha 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 ha. Hold me, you be, you be, you be die, ha 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 ha. Hold me, you be, you be, you be die, ha 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 ha. And we're done.